This is a really simple calculator, multiplication calculator, written in assembly language, written in uh, specifically MASM, right? So the assembly language for the x86 processor. And I'm just going to walk through uh, how I created this multiplication calculator. So to start off in assembly, uh, we need to declare well our variables. So under the dot data line here, I'm creating a variable named code title, directions, prompt one, prompt two, so on. These are bytes. These are just strings. Um, and I made sure to end them in the necessary zero. A byte is represented only by uh, eight bits of data is all that is taking up. And then as we go down here, uh, these are still just strings of data. And then we get to um, num1, num2, which is actually going to be user inputted information, and the total, which is going to be the result of our calculation. You'll notice that these are of the type D word, which stands for double word, and that is 32 bits of information. Uh, uh, just word, of course, is 16 then. Now let's get to the executable part of our code. As opposed to C++, this language uh, requires, well, a lot more detail. It's a uh it's it's closer to machine language obviously a lower level language so here's dot code which is signaling our executable portion and what we're going to need to do right off the bat here is i'm just moving out the well let me show you what this program is going to do let's go ahead and get debug and there we are so math multiplication magic i know fancy and let me see seven and let's put in the number three and oh it even got it right 21 so it prompt me for the first number prompts me for the second number and then completes the calculation and outputs it in this format and i can just hit enter to exit back so what is happening there the first thing that it's outputting is the code title so we're moving um and then this is the target and this is the source okay offset uh make sure that we grab it from this specific address and we're going to do that with the strings but what we're doing is grabbing the code title so this information and we are putting it into the edx register once we put it there we're going to call write string and so we're going to write what's in this edx register which will be the code title which will be this we're going to write it out to the council then we're going to do this CRLF stands for carriage return line feed. Really, it's a blank line. Next up, we're prompting the user. So we're going to move, move, prompt one. What's prompt one? First number into the target, right? So here's the source of the information. That's where we're targeting it into the EDX register. Once we have done so, we're going to call write string and write what's in the EDX register out to the council. Then we're calling read int. And the reason we call this is we are expecting the user to input some information. After we call enter the uh, first number, the user is going to need to, well, enter a number. Once they do so, that will be, uh, that's why we're calling read int. We'll grab that information and we're going to move that information that we now have. And since they are entering a number, it will be in the EAX register. And so we're going to take that information they entered in the EAX register. That's what call read int does. It's going to read it into the EAX register. It's going to then we're going to grab the EAX register and say send it to num1, which is our variable that we have created. So now we're going to do that same process over, except this time prompt two, prompting them for the second number and putting it in num2. And now we need to get to the actual multiplication. So we're going to move num1 into the EAX register. This is important to complete this multiplication step. To complete this calculation, you must have one of your numbers in the EAX register. You must. So I would go ahead and do it with your first one. So we move num1, right? So this is the source, and I'm targeting to the EAX register, moving that number into there. Then the next line, I'm going to move the number saved under num2, whatever the user had entered, into the EBX register. Then I'm writing MUL, which is short for multiply. That's the instruction. And it is all, it already knows we want to multiply the EAX register. We just have to tell it with what. And so, okay, multiply the EAX register by what I have in the EBX register. All right? And so now, once that is done, the result will automatically be stored in the EAX register. And so now that we 
again, I just want to hit this multiplication point again. You need to have it, you need to have one number in the EAX register. I'd recommend the first. Then when you do multiply, all you need is one register, and that's the register that you're going to be multiply, multiplying the EAX register by, because it will do that automatically. And then the value, the new, the product of those two numbers is stored in the EAX register over top of our original number here. So now I'm going to take that EAX register and move it, uh, move that number to total, point it towards total. And then we're going to output this stuff to council. So move to the EAX register, number one, call, write decimal. I'm writing a decimal instead of an int because that way it eliminates the addition sign. It would have a plus sign in front of it if I did not do this. And then offset times, oh, that's the multiplication sign. I have times up here as the multiplication sign. And then again, I'm going to write decimal for num2. And then offset equals sign, right? And this is how I have to write it out to get the multiplication and then all three numbers there. Finally, I use total, write decimal, uh, CRLF, carriage return line feed, it just means skip a line, skip a line, to kind of separate it out. And that should do it. I'm going to run it one more time, and I am going to post this full program um, in the description. There will be a link to it, so feel free to check it out, use it, mess with it, mock it, whatever you need. All right, let's do some complicated math. Uh, well, not really. Let's do 9 and 8. Ta-da! Awesome. So, Yep, it will be in the description below.